fun. It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. This is IRG's Health Talk. Back to Tom Hutler and Shannon O'Kelly. Our next guest is Dr. Ryan Hudson, specializing in sports and performance medicine. He's going to talk about if leg pain could be shin splints or a stress fracture. Let's listen as Dr. Ryan Hudson talks with Shannon O'Kelly on Como. Dr. Hudson, welcome and welcome to Health Talk. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you, Shannon. I'm really happy to be here. Well, we're happy to be talking to you. We're going to talk about um, shin splints and uh, tibial, t- tibialis stress syndrome or stress fractures as it sometimes is referred to. But before we get into that topic, uh, which uh, is, a, is a big topic, tell our listeners and, and tell our audience about your practice. Sure. Yeah. So I am a sports medicine doctor that practices at uh, the Poly Clinic. Um, we have several locations. Uh, uh, we're uh, situated in the Northgate area, downtown, and Bellevue. And my practice um, is, is split between Bellevue and Northgate. Okay, so you go from Bellevue to Northgate, and you focus on sports medicine. I mean, and, and fellowship trained, or was that your interest in medical school? And uh, tell us about your training in the sports medicine world. Oh, yeah. I went to residency in, in primary care, then specialized within sports medicine. And so, and then for the last 10 years, I've been practicing sports medicine, seeing um, really all age groups, uh, five years and up, um, do a lot of musculoskeletal ultrasound for diagnostic and, and procedural purposes, and see, you know, athletes of, of really all types. So you see the athlete from the young athlete to the recreational athlete to the, the person or the athlete that's just um, uh, maybe uh, it, just trying to stay in shape but recreationally uh, participating in athletics. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say here is you don't have to be, I mean, this high school collegiate competitive athlete. If you're recreational, that's the patient that you like to see in all the athletes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I, you don't have to be on a sports team necessarily. Right. <laughs> um, in fact, I, I see injuries of, of all sorts, you know, in, including, you know, just overuse injuries that, that may happen uh, with life, not necessarily a sport. Uh, perfect. Okay, we're going to talk about um, shin splints, the old shin splints. And, and you just mentioned uh, sports and stuff. I remember in high school, I ran track. I remember one season I went out and probably got too rambunctious, ran too fast, too much too soon. And I had these shin splints and they were painful. And I got them early in the season and it took a long time to get rid of them. So let's talk about the shin splints. Let's do it A to Z. Let's talk about what it is, what's going on, treatment, and then even how sometimes it can become a stress fracture. Uh, are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, shin splints can definitely be, be painful. And yeah, this is, I think this time of year, because, uh, you know, COVID restrictions are starting to be lifted. And, you know, with the uh, the longer days, people are becoming more and more active trying to get to their, their pre-COVID workout habits and, um, and shin splints are a potential risk, you know, that, that it can occur with that change. And anatomically, tell us what's going on, what tissue is involved as we kind of walk through this to the treatment and return to pain-free activities. Tell us anatomically what's going on and what gets inflamed. Sure. Um, what causes uh, shin splints are there's a it's a inflammation at the attachment site of of tendons that help to stabilize the foot. So specifically, the the soleus and the posterior tibialis uh, muscles help to to stabilize our foot. And with uh, if they're not really strong and, and you start running, uh, then you can get this traction um, causing inflammation at their attachment sites. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because uh, it's usually associated with activity. It's in the lower leg. We call them shin splints because the pain seems to be referred or runs along that area we call the shin. But the problem is deeper in the leg tissue and that connective tissue you talked about that connects connects those muscles. And particularly, I talk about that interosseous membrane, if you can, just how that connects those tendons to the bone. Yeah, so it's, it's right at that connection site that we think that most of the inflammation is, is occurring. You know, it shows up on, on MRI as, as being more in the, the posterior medial part of the tibia, kind of in the mid tibia uh, is, is where you see it. And so a lot of times patients will be able to poke down in that area, kind of on the inside into their calf muscle and kind of produce some symptoms that will be sore. Right. It's not as pinpoint as, um, as a stress fracture can be. And that's actually one of the differentiating aspects in terms of, you know, trying to, to decide is this a stress fracture or shin splints. Um, but it definitely has a characteristic location on the, the medial or inside part, kind of deep into the, the calf area where it attaches to the, uh, to the tibia. Back with more with Dr. Ryan Hudson after this timeout on Como. 
It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. Now back to IRG's Health Talk. We continue our conversation with Dr. Ryan Hudson on Como. Dr. Hudson, again, thank you for joining us on Health Talk, and thank you for explaining and talking about shin splints and whether they're located, what causes them. Shin splint is an overuse inflammation. You mentioned something about a fracture. How do how does a patient know, or how would I know I have shin splints versus a fracture? Yeah, well, they have a lot of common uh, common uh, similarities in that you know both of these occur with overuse, um, very common to to running, um, and they occur close uh, to the, really the same place in the lower leg at the tibia. One of the the, the differences um, is that. The stress fractures can be a little bit more uh, localized at the tibia. Stress fractures uh, occur, uh, they're thought to be like a continuum. Like it, it can start with shin splints, and then over time, you can develop a stress fracture. And the fracture is, is, is stressing, I mean, the, 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 the wear and tear or the overuse, the chronic irritation kind of stresses that bone when that tissue connects on that bone. Talk about how that bone becomes fractured because it's not one of these fractures where all of a sudden you ran over or you fall. I mean, it's not a traumatic fracture. It's an overuse fracture. Right. So essentially with too much stress, the process of bone remodeling and healing gets out of balance and bone formation essentially can't keep up. And so a good analogy would be like bending a paper clip back and forth repeatedly until it breaks. Um, oh, I like that one. It reaches a threshold, and then, you, and then you have a fracture. So it starts with a stress response, and then over time, more and more injury occurs, and you can get a fracture. Right, and then so this fracture sometimes, or these fractures, uh, these are not really sometimes easy to see just by doing an x-ray. Is that correct? I mean, it takes a little bit more in-depth diagnostics sometimes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You kind of have to have a... Uh, a good index of suspicion when you're seeing them because especially at first, like the first two weeks, they almost never show up on x-ray um, and you need other imaging modalities such as bone scans or MRIs to, to pick them up. Um, but oftentimes you can avoid getting an MRI. If someone comes in saying they've had a big change in their workout habits or they've gone from kind of a sedentary lifestyle to, to, to running, um, you know, quite frequently or, or those type of changes, then it's, you know, very likely to be a stress fracture. Is the, uh, pain difference and when you talk about uh, if i if i truly just have overuse inflammation i.e shin splints versus a fracture what's the pain difference there i could imagine the fracture pain is different than just the soft tissue inflammation type pain like i said uh, earlier in terms of the distinguishing features shin splints tend to be a little bit more diffuse than stress fractures but also with shin splints sometimes uh, the pattern is you you can when you st- first start running or, or doing your, your activity, you're, you get the, the shin pain, and then it kind of warms up and it subsides to some degree, and it doesn't hurt as much. And then after you're done with your activity, then it, then it aches. Whereas with stress fractures, you know, when you start running, it hurts. And then if you try to run through it, it usually gets even more painful. And then if you stop, then it, it gets better. And usually that's, that's the pattern, unless the stress fracture is, is, is advanced, um, and then they can hurt even at rest. Well, Dr. Hudson, I, I want to have you come back. I would love to talk to you about treatment and kind of return to play. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, Shannon, what do you do for shin splints? I used to, they used to tell us to lean against the wall and put our uh, weight on the balls of our feet. Is that still a valid or is there a lot more uh, technical <laughs> stuff? Because that, that was about yeah. 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, me too. About 40 years ago, we probably all experienced shin splints. You know, what we do is obviously we're trying to modify the activity, reduce whatever is causing the inflammation, decrease the pain and inflammation, and then gradually return to functional activities strength. All right. Ryan Hudson, Dr. Ryan Hudson, you're going to get more information at polyclinic.com. Final segment next right here on Como.